Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And the way that He moves and His anointing Amen. that destroys every yoke. And yeah. His Spirit that lifts you up. Right. You can feel dog tired or you can feel so sick you can't put one foot in front of the other. Or wow. You can be in pain. I've experienced this in my own life. You can be in right. pain. And the Spirit of the Lord can begin to move and that pain is not there anymore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My, my, my. Just that's think, that's only a taste of what God has in store. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are worldly bodies. Cannot sustain, would not be able to sustain themselves in the complete glory and presence of God. That's why we have to have a new body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to be going today to 1 Samuel, the fifth chapter. I don't want to read a scripture to you to open up with that you probably hadn't heard in a long time. Hebrews 11th chapter and the first verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Now we have grown up, we that have grown up in the Pentecostal movement, that first verse we can quote to you right off the top of our head. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm not going to stop there anymore. For by it... The elders obtained a good report. Amen? Right. And these past several weeks now, we've been looking at how the patriarchs of the Old Testament, those that lived for God before the cross, we've been looking and learning about how they were justified. What caused them to be righteous in the sight of God. And we've learned a very important fact their faith was like our faith today. They were justified not by their works. Not even by the law. Not by the lambs that they took into the tabernacle. That they took and sprinkled the blood or that they sacrificed on the altars. Their justification and sanctification and their righteousness before God came the same way ours does today. Theirs came looking forward to that which was to come. When that lamb was sacrificed, it wasn't that lamb that, ju that justified them. It was what that lamb represented that would come in the form of God in the flesh and die on the cross of Calvary. So we have learned what just when we get over to glory and we talk to Abraham, yeah. Abraham, gonna, he got there the same way you're going to get there. He got there by faith in that promise which was to come. When you get there, you will get there by faith and only by faith in that promise that was fulfilled on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. Yeah. You won't be able to stand on the streets of gold and say, well, I got here because I kept the law. I got here because I did all these great works. I got here because I was such a good person. No, you will come by the blood of the Lamb or you won't get there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Same with the Old Testament saints. And we've yeah. been seeing this. Picture after picture in the Old Testament yeah. that points toward one cataclysmic event in the history of mankind and that is Jesus Christ dying on the cross of Calvary and uttering the words, it is finished, amen? It is finished what? That which had been promised all the way to the, to the in the beginning there in the Garden of Eden. Right. With God Himself prophesied to Adam, Eve, and the serpent yeah. and told them that a seed's coming that's going to bruise your head. There's a seed coming. A wo the woman's seed is going to come forth. And all throughout the history of man, the prophets of old would stand and say things like, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and she'll call his name Emmanuel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we've seen example after example. Yeah, praise to us. We talked about Abraham and how that his faith, the Bible teaches us plainly, that he was not justified by his works or else he would have been able to boast of that. But he was justified by faith. What does the Bible say about Abraham? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. What? His works? The law? No. 
He believed God. His faith was in that which God's Word had told him. What God had promised him. Abraham was justified by faith. The same way that you are justified today. You will not stand. And I told you this several times while we've been on this series. That I don't want to upset you today. But if you think you're going to stand before God in His holiness, in His righteousness, in His presence, and boast of how good you've been, and that's going to fly, you are sadly mistaken. And you will find that out when you stand in His presence. Amen. We, after we talked about Abraham, we talked about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And how they fell, how they sinned, how they rebelled, how they made a mess, miserably made a mess. Right. And how the first thing they did was try to cover it up. Yeah. Hurry, get us some fig leaves. Let's sew them together. Let's fix ourselves up. And they, the Bible doesn't say anything about them hiding till God shows up. Right. Because see, man thinks his ways and his goodness is good enough mm. till it's compared with God. All right. Oh no, I hear him coming. We better hide. Mm. Well, what for, Adam? We've covered ourselves. Yeah, but this ain't good enough. Well, it was good enough before God showed up. Yeah, but it ain't good enough now that He's here. Amen. Amen. That's the way with man. Countless men, and I say that in a broad sense. I'm talking about men and women in the history of mankind. <laughs> Countless men and women think that their righteousness is good enough. Yeah. Their works is good enough. Come on. Their penance mm -hmm. Come on, preach. is good enough. Yeah. yeah. But when you stand in the presence of an all-holy yeah. and an all-righteous God, you will find out just how pitiful your righteousness really is. Oh, tell us. You may think today, oh, I'm living good enough to save me. Well, wait till you stand in His presence exactly. and you'll find out that you're good enough ain't good enough. True. The best you got ain't good Absolutely. enough. Amen? Absolutely. And that takes us to the ones we talked about next. Who we talk about? Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel brought sacrifices to God. Mm -hmm. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Why? Because it was a sacrifice of blood. Come on. The same way that God sacrificed for the first sin whenever he, coat, he, put, he put coats on Adam and Eve of animal skins. Yeah. But Cain, he brings a sacrifice of the best that he has to offer. The work of his hands. Amen. And I told you before, I guarantee you, that Cain meticulously went over all of the fruit, all of what he had grown, to make sure this is the best that I've got. Surely God will accept the best that I've got to offer. Man still has that rooted and grounded down somewhere inside of us. We want to be able to justify ourselves, and we really want to can try to convince ourselves that surely God... Uh, this is my best effort. This is the best that I can do. This is the best compared to the rest. And like I said, you may compare yourself to somebody else and you may feel good. Come on. You may look at Brother Billy's life and you might think, well, I live better than he does. I'm more holy than he is. I know the Bible better than he does from front to back. I can quote it. I can give you the verse and the chapter. Come on. And you might feel good. Yeah. Till you get in the presence of God. Yes, sir. Then you realize... What you got ain't good enough. Exactly. And Cain might have thought, well, this is good. My sacrifice is good as his. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the big difference was his was the way God said it had to be. Yeah. And Cain's wasn't. And Cain's was rejected because of it. And man still sacrificing at the altar of Cain today. Still trying to offer their best. Yeah. Yeah. What I can do is good mm -hmm. enough. I, well, I've got to keep the, Well, yeah, I know that Jesus died on the cross, but I've got to keep this law over here. Come on. I've got to make sure I keep all of it because no sinner's going to enter in. If you've got to keep all of it, ain't none of going to make it. Hell better get a little bit bigger because ain't nobody going to make it to heaven. Everybody's going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Jesus came and fulfilled the law mm -hmm. because we were not able to keep the law. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not doing away with the law, mm -hmm. but when our faith is in Him, that law is fulfilled and sure. We don't go about stealing and killing and murdering and all of this other stuff, but that's not what makes us righteous. What makes us righteous is our faith in Jesus Christ and His shed blood on the cross of Calvary. You living right does not make you holy today. Come on. You dressing right does not make you holy today. 
You listening to the right things does not make you holy or justified in the sight of God today. Those things follow your salvation, but what justifies you today and the only thing that God will accept is faith in His finished work and the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That's the only faith that God will accept. If your faith is in the law, you will be let down. If your faith is in your works, you will be let down. If your faith is in mankind, you will be let down. The only faith God accepts the only faith he will acknowledge is faith in what Jesus Christ did when he hung between heaven and earth and he said it is finished. The temple veil was written in twain without your works. The temple veil was written in twain without the law. The temple veil was written in twain when the blood of the Lamb was spilt for mankind. Absolutely. And we've seen this over and over and over. We went from Cain and Abel to the dark streets of Egypt All right. when the 10th plague was going to come through. And how, Brother Tyler, that when God came through, He made this specific statement. He didn't say, when I come through and I see how good Brother David's being. Yeah. He didn't say, whenever I come through and I see what a virtuous woman Sister Cindy has been, I will pass over. No, He made this statement. When I see the blood... I will pass over you. I've told you this before and I'm being repetitive too. I guarantee you there were some of those Egyptians that were better people than some of those, some of those Israelites. Amen. They had a better demeanor. They wasn't as grouchy. They might even help people more than they did. They might not even like the fact that some of them may not even like the fact that the Israelites were captain. They might have felt sorry for them. So I don't know when we got to treat them people like that. Amen. But being good enough not, didn't get it. Amen. Didn't work. Amen. Just because the Egyptian was better than the Israelite doesn't mean that the Israelite was taken and the Egyptian was left and was, was uh, protected. Right. The Israelite was protected because of the blood. Amen. The, if you are saved today because of the blood. Absolutely. You are saved today because of the blood. Amen. No getting around that. That's right. Every man, woman, or child that has ever lived yeah. from the beginning and said, Brother Billy, no, wait a minute. There's a dispensation of law. There's a dispensation of grace. Yeah, but if you go all the way back to the book of Genesis, you will find out that they were all saved by grace. Come on. Noah, because he did so many great works, mm -hmm. God spared him. No, that ain't what it says. Mm -hmm. The thoughts and the, the intent of man's heart was on evil continually, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. We talked about Noah. How that, that ark that he built was a picture and a type of the cross of Calvary and the way of escape that Jesus would make. Yeah. In Noah's day, there was one way to escape the coming judgment. Today, in the year of 2014, there is only one way to escape the coming judgment. And that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. You will get there no other way. Right. That's all the reviewing I'm going to do. And if you've had an opportunity to look at 1 Samuel, the 5th chapter, you might be thinking, how in the world are we going to tie this into what we've been talking about? Well, it's not going to be quite as hard as you think. I want to share with you a little bit of history first. And I'm not going to pronounce these words just right. So please don't email me. Don't call me. Don't tell me I'm illiterate. I already know that. We were in school this past week. And we have spelling power words. And there's usually 30. Sometimes around 30. And I read them. And the kids write them. And then we check to see if they got it right or not. And one of the words, I pronounced it. And Sister Hannah spelt it, but Sister Hannah didn't spell it the way it's supposed to be. She spelt it the way I pronounced it. And I said, well, wait a minute, let me pronounce that different for you because we don't pronounce, it's not, it's not uh, spelt the way we say it because we don't actually say it right. Yeah. Sister Hannah said, is that because we're hillbillies? No. <laughs> I said, I couldn't say it no better myself. Amen. <laughs> We get our errs and ors and we don't put the emphasis where it's supposed to be. Right. But when I told her how it's supposed to sound, she spelled it. So these are these probably ain't going to be exactly the way it's supposed to be. But <clears throat> Here's goes anyway. Hadayoshi. How's that? 
a Japanese warlord mm -hmm. who ruled over Japan in the late 1500s mm -hmm. commissioned a colossal statue of Buddha for a shrine in Kyoto. Mm. It took 50,000 men five years to build this shrine. Mm. But the work had barely been completed when the earthquake of 1596 brought the roof of the shrine crashing down and wrecked the great statue that they had erected. In a rage, Hideyoshi shot an arrow toward the disaster and said these words, I put you here at great expense and you can't even look after your own temple. Amen? Us, we 50,000 men spent five years building you yep. and the expense untold. Mm -hmm. And you can't even protect your own temple. Come on. With that, let's look at Dagon in the first, in first Samuel, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, a little background on this, as you already know, many of you, some of you out there may not know, but the Philistines had taken away the Ark of the Covenant from God's people. Why? Because of the sin of the priests. God's glory has been withdrawn from most churches in our nation today because of the sin of the preachers. And I'm not even talking about I'm not even talking about their adultery, their fornication, their lies, their cheating, their stealing. I'm talking about the false doctrine they preach across their pulpits every Sunday morning. Amen. I'm talking about the lack of the gospel being preached in our churches today, in our nation. Amen? Exactly. So we find here that the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant. Now you've got to understand what the Ark of the Covenant meant. Yeah. The Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites meant the presence of God. Come on. The headship of God. God's presence being with them. God's blessing being with them. So the Philistines, they thought, well, since we've since we've captured that, that must mean that Dagon is greater than Jehovah. That must mean that our God is greater than their God. They believe the reason they had defeated the Israelites was because their God was greater. No, the reason they had defeated the Israelites because Israel, Israel had lost sight of their God. Israel had backslidden. Israel had sinned and rebelled in the sight of God. See, the enemy... He'll dance around your grave thinking that He defeated you because He's greater than your God. No, He defeated you because you let Him. Come on. Because you took your eyes off the prize. Because you took your eyes off of your God. Because we lost sight of who God is and what He can do. Amen. America has ceased to be, to be the great nation she used to be Amen. because America has ceased to be the praying nation that she used to be. Absolutely. America has ceased to be the great nation she used to be because America has ceased to be the righteous nation she used to be. Amen. America has ceased to be the great nation she used to be because America has turned from God and the false yes. idols. Yes. Amen, brother Bill. In Oklahoma City, there stands a statue of, ten, of the Ten Commandments. Right. And just recently, if you've kept up with the headlines, the satan, a satanic church has decided that beside that statue, they want a statue of Satan. Yeah. They've already raised the money to build it. They're just waiting for Oklahoma City to give them the permission to do so. Mm. And Oklahoma City's trying to use red tape and different things to keep it from happening, but it would not surprise me if that in the very near future, yeah. there in the capital city of Oklahoma, yeah. we see a statue erected to the devil himself. Yeah. And this statue, and y'all seen the picture before during Halloween when I show you different pictures of different gods. It's the horned goat god is what it is. Right. And he's sitting there and on each side there's a young child, a boy on one side, a girl on the other, looking up at him in adoration. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, America. Yeah. You can turn your back on God if you want to. Wow. You can build your false, your false gods and statues to them if you want to. You can bow at the altar of the Muslim religion if you want to. You can sow every corrupt seed you got in your seed sack. But sooner or later, you will reap the corrupt seed that you have sown. You cannot continue to spit in the face of God and not suffer the
the judgment thereof. God is a loving God. God is a holy God. He's a compassionate and a merciful God. But He will judge sin. He will judge sin. Amen. I saw a billboard that a, two or three years ago. I don't remember what, what city it was erected in. But high in the sky, it said, Don't believe in God? Join the crowd. Oh. It was put up by a bunch of atheists. Oh. You can do those things in the face of God. You can strut around like a rooster and think that you've got it made and that you ain't going to suffer nothing from it. But judgment's coming. Oh. Judgment's coming. Oh. Judgment's coming. The same as it did in the dark streets of Egypt that night when the Israelites had to be under the blood. Judgment's coming. And there's only one thing that deters God's judgment. And that is the blood of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It's time for an American law. It's time for the church to get her eyes back on Jesus, to get her eyes back where they belong, and begin to preach the blood of the old rugged cross again. Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Bless Brother Bill. You can do what you want to do. You can choose to split hell wide open if you want to. God ain't going to force you into heaven. He ain't going to hog tie you and shove you through the gate. Come on, Brother Bill. Don't believe in God if you don't want to. Doesn't change the fact that He still exists. Amen. Believe we came from monkeys if you want to. That's your decision. But it doesn't change, change the fact that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That God made man out of the dust. He formed him out of the dust of the earth. Right. And breathed life into his nostrils. Amen. Absolutely. We find here that the Philistines decided, well, our God's greater. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's take the Ark of the Covenant and let's put it in the Temple of Dagon. First uh -huh. Samuel 5. The first chapter. I mean the first verse, I'm sorry. I had not preached for a little while. Y'all have to excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, to y'all anyway. All right. Ask Reese. I preached plenty at the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Listen what it says. So they've got the Ark of God. If you need more history than that, go back and read it. It's really interesting. And you need to know it anyway. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it unto the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow. Now remember what they've done. They've took the ark of the covenant, which to them represented the Israelites' God. Yeah. Wasn't just a box. Wasn't just some kind of pretty ornaments. This represented the Israelites' God. Because you've got to remember the Egyptians, the Philistines, all the other ites there, they they worshipped things. Yeah. Idols. Idols. Yeah. You know, something could happen, and I don't, I don't have a good example right off the top of my head, but then they could think that a frog is deity. So let's build a statue. And bow down to this frog. Come on. Amen. Come on. I like what Brother Beasley said one time. Out there in the Navajo Indian Reservation, there's a lot of superstition. There's a lot of idol worship. Mm -hmm. And he said there was this one man that would go out. He worshipped this tree. It was huge. It was a great big tree. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of tree it was. doesn't matter. He worshipped it. Yeah. He'd go out there every morning. And he'd bow down before it. And he'd pay homage to it. And he'd worship it. He'd pray to this great tree. I don't know what he called it. But he'd pray to this great tree. And he'd go out there every morning. <clears throat> One morning he went out there and somebody had cut his tree down. <laughs> One day you're going to find out the God you've been sacrificing to is the wrong God. The God you've been sacrificing to don't have any power. So they believe that this represents Israel's God. So they bring it in there and they set it beside Dagon in his house. And the next morning they get up, and the Bible says in verse 3, Behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord, and they took Dagon, and they set him in his place again. Oh no, our great God that defeated the Israelites has fell over on his face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> down, down. Oh, Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Yes. Let's 
This must mean that Israel's God's greater than ours. So let's get rid of Dagon. That ain't what they did. They pick old Dagon up and they set him back in place. Here, fasten him a little better this time. Oh, and by the way, Dagon was half man, half fish. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of him or not, but the top part of him, the top part of him was he had arms, he had a head, he was the, the shape of a man. From the waist down was the shape of a fish. Because they believed that this God, they had been told by these myths, came up out of a great sea and they worshipped him. So they made an idol of him. This is the way he's supposed to look. So they fastened him back up there. They fixed him. Yeah. They think, well, now, now he's fixed. Let's see what happens. It says, and when they arose on the morrow morning, mm -hmm. verse 4, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the Lord. Just as he had before, but listen, there's a little bit more now. And the head of Dagon and both of the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. And only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Now not only do they come in and find their God yep. falling over. Say, Brother Billy, what's this got to do with what we've been talking about? Hold on. Just bear with me. Not only do they find him falling over, but they the first day they pick him up, they fix him back. This time they come in, he's falling over, but that ain't always wrong with him this time. His head's off. And his hands are off. You talk about making a clear statement to some people. Yeah. This God, this false God that you worship, you come in and find Him laying before the Ark of the Covenant which represented the, the presence of a living God. His head is off. His hands are off. And that strikes the fear of God in some of them. Yeah. Amen. Mom. The Bible says in verse 5, Therefore neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon and Ashdod unto this day. Now what does this have to do with what we've been talking about? The Philistines, knowing nothing about the way that God worked, they assumed that Israel's defeat was because their God, Dagon, was more powerful than Israel's God. They didn't know that Israel's defeat was because of their sin and their rebellion. And... Their God was supposed to be represented by the ark. So they take him into their so-called God's house and they set it side by side. Yeah. And their God falls over and they fix it. Oh. And their God falls over and his hands off and his hands is off. And no doubt there were some crazy men there that probably thought, well, we can fix that. Let's just put his head back on and his hands back on and sit him back where he goes. We got to get rid of the ark though. They did decide that. <laughs> you got to give them a little bit of credit yeah. for having a little bit of sparks. Amen. Well, we'll continue here. Well, you know, well, Dagon, he's a great God, but one thing we got to do, we got to get rid of that Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> we got to put it somewhere besides where we are at. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Come on. Brother Billy, what in the world does that have to do with what we've been talking about? Well, let me ask you something. When we do our best and we try to do work out our own way of salvation, our own means, that's not the right words, our own means of justification, our own means of righteousness, and we mess up. How many people ever messed up before? How many people ever fell on your face before? Yeah. How many people your own reasoning has let you down? The, your own work of your hands has let you down. Do you see what I'm talking about? Why did God cut the head off of Dagon and his hands off? Because man's reasoning and man's works are the reason that Dagon was erected there to begin with. Amen? And God was trying to give them a clear message that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts and that I am God and I'm a jealous God and I will not be, I will not share my glory with anyone or anything else. And whenever we try to work our way to God. When we try to do our best and sanctify ourselves mm -hmm. and we mess up, yeah. what do we do? We do the same thing that the Philistines did when they came in and found Dagon on his face. Right. Instead of saying, oh God, I know 
that it's not in me, it's in you. I know that my faith cannot be in my goodness, in my works, in my righteousness. It must be in you. It's still doing that. Come on. We pick up our false God of works. Right. Fix it back in its place. Uh -huh. And go on trying to work our way to heaven. Amen. Trying to make ourselves righteous. Yeah. Try you say, Brother Billy, are you comparing our works to their false fish god, Dagon? I'm doing exactly that. Oh. Anything you put your faith in other than the finished work of the cross has became a God to you in some form or some fashion. Oh, Amen? If you believe, listen to me. Oh, I don't know if I need to say that or not. <laughs> that statue of Satan they're wanting to build down there in Oklahoma City. Yeah. For people in one of the satanic builders there, whatever they are, mm -hmm. lost, said it'll give, and it's, it's the way it's laid out, you can sit in its lap. Said it'll give the world a chance to sit in the lap of Satan and ponder and, and make a decision and think about things. Oh. But listen to me. They will, if they do, if they, if they erect that and people worship that, uh -huh. that is a false god. Right. If you worship this today, if you believe that the commandments and the law and the statutes and all of the things that's laid out, if you believe they saved you, you're not in any better shape than those that are bound down to the statue of the devil. You will be just as lost in the end if you believe that your religion can save you. If you believe that your denominationalism can save you, if you believe that the law can save you and that you're justified because of your goodness, in the end, you will be as lost as they are. Come on. Amen. Come on, pray. You will be as lost as they are. I'm not impressed when America hangs up the statues of the, of the, uh, the, uh, the carvings of the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> I'm impressed when America follows them. I'm impressed when America worships God, the true God. Amen. It doesn't impress me much whenever America puts in God we trust on their money and yet they're steal, they kill, they, and they lie, and they cheat. Yes. Amen. Come on. It doesn't impress I put it on Facebook this week and I got a lot of fans on there, I'll guarantee you that. Huh. I'm not impressed whenever they're always putting quotes on there by Hollywood stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not impressed Come on. whenever Hollywood stars talk about their relationship with Jesus and then go out and still make the same smut and the same filth they've been making right. all along. True. More importantly than that, God ain't impressed either. Yes. Amen. Come on. Don't Say tell it. me how much you love God and then cuss every breath and call and use his name in vain and, 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 and go out and commit fornication and do all these ungodly things. Don't tell me how much you love Jesus. Come on. Because men will know you by your works. You're not saved because of works. Yeah. But when you're saved, you will have works. The Bible says we are saved unto good works. Good works cannot save us, but salvation produces good works. Yeah. Righteous living cannot save you, but salvation produces righteous living. The fruit of the Spirit, which you can't really even have, unless you have the Spirit, but there is a form of fruit. The fruit that you bear cannot save you, but when you're saved, you will bear fruit. Yes, sir. The Philistines put their God not on the same level as, as the Israelites' God, but even but higher. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, that's what we do. Yeah. Come on. When you believe that it takes the blood of Jesus plus what you can do, you know what you're saying? What Jesus did was not good enough. I have to help him. Yeah. yeah. True. Amen. Amen. Oh, is that plain enough this morning? Amen. Whenever you say that, that what Jesus did, oh, I know he died on the cross, uh -huh. but I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do that. You're, you're saying that what Jesus did ain't good enough to save you. You're saying what Jesus did ain't good enough to save you. You have to save yourself. And that's what, that's the comparison between what we lift up and what the Philistines lifted up. They lifted up Dagon. We lift up our own ways and our own works and our own means of justification. God has told us very clearly in His Word 
that he will not share his glory with anyone. He has told us very clearly in his word that he's a jealous God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He is a jealous God. How, how do you think your wife would feel if you treated another woman as, as good or better than you do her? Maybe better than you do her. Right. She'd get Bill. jealous. Amen. Come on. If she cares anything about you, she'd get jealous. Yes, Amen. Sir. How do you think your husband's going to feel right. if you're if you're paying more attention to another man? Right. Or if you're if you're uh, treating another man better than you are him, he's going to get jealous. Right. Well, you can multiply that a thousand times because God is a just and a holy God. Amen. Yes, your husband might have messed up and he might have faults and failures, but the God you're serving don't. Amen. Exactly. And to turn to other gods is a slap in the face to his holiness, his righteousness, right. his sovereignty. Right. To claim today that you must do penance in order to be to find forgiveness is a slap in the face to God and the finished work of the cross. Oh, come on. And we take come on, these friend. things yeah. and we set them on the same level as what God has done. Right. And even when they fail, and they fail miserably. Amen. You think, well, I'm going to live good enough. Well, oops, you didn't live good enough today. Right. I'm going to keep the law. Oops. You didn't keep all the law today. Come on. Man still tries to get up. Yeah. Dust off the dust. I can do it. I know I can. Yeah. I can do it. Mm -hmm. Struggles to go on, falls, messes up again. I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. That's why so many people struggle with their salvation. Yeah. There are some poor people that they don't know whether they're saved from one day to the next. Amen. Well, I was saved yesterday because I prayed and I fasted and I did good things, but today I don't know if I'm saved uh -huh. or not. I lost my temper. I said something I shouldn't have said. I did something I shouldn't have done. Yeah. I told you before. You can go to bed tonight and you might think, man, I did good today. I didn't lose my temper. I didn't do anything wrong. And you might feel more saved. Tomorrow you might mess up miserably. Yeah. When you go to bed tomorrow night, you might think, Ooh, boy, I really done it today. Mm -hmm. I messed up. Yeah. You're no more saved today than you are tomorrow. Right. As long as your faith's in the right place. Amen. Having a good day and doing good things didn't save you. Right. <clears throat> True. Your faith in Jesus Christ is what saves you. Try. It's not of works lest any man should, should boast. Mm -hmm. You will not stand before God and say, but God, uh -huh. I fed the hungry. I clothed those that were naked. Mm -hmm. I took care of the poor. I did all those things. Yet you rejected God's way of salvation. Can't be saved from those things. Now when you're saved, you will begin to do some of those things. The Bible says in Philippians 2 and 9, Wherefore God hath also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, Amen. that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow Amen. of things in heaven. Do you hear that? Come on. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Anything that you place as an object of faith for your salvation has become a false god to you. The same way that Dagon was a false god to those that worshipped him there with the Philistines. And it will fail miserably. It will fall over and you'll set it up and it'll fall over and you'll set it up and it'll fall over and you'll set it up. And you'll spend your whole life not even knowing whether you're saved or not. I've heard people say, well, if I, I hope I make it. I, I, if I can just barely make it in. If, if I can do just good enough to get in. You can't do good enough to get in. Mm -hmm. All right. He did mm -hmm. good enough mm -hmm. to get you in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He did mm -hmm. good enough mm -hmm. to get you in. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's time for the church to put away the false gods. It's time for the church. And we can talk about America and as bad a shape as she's in, but in order to do that, you must first talk about the church because judgment must first start at His house. Amen? Right. I believe as the church goes, so goes the world. Amen? Right. I believe that at one time, and I'm closing, but the Donnie Swaggart made some statements this week that I wish I had wrote them down and I'd share them with you like he did, but I, I probably couldn't do it like he did anyway. But he was talking about 
men, godly men that used to preach the gospel in the early stages of our nation when our nation was first growing and becoming the great nation that she is today. And how that when they took the pulpit, they preached the Word of God without compromise. And how that leaders listened to those men. Listened to those and they revered those that preached the gospel and that preached the unadulterated, the undiluted Word of God. But now we have preachers that show up at church with their flip-flops on and their Bermuda shorts and they take the pulpit and they're hip and they're cool and they're loved by their congregation but their message is a mess. They have nothing but feel good, something to help you feel better about yourself. I'm not trying to make you feel better about yourself. I want you to understand that self will take you to hell. Amen? Right. I want you to understand today that self-esteem is not godly. Come on. Esteeming God higher than you, that's godly. Mm -hmm. Taking the worm's road, that's godly. Yeah. Exalting yourself, God will exalt the, the if humbling yourself, God will exalt those that humble themselves. Come on. <laughs> so the church goes and the world goes, mm -hmm. and they all follow the same wretched path. <laughs> Only one means of salvation today. Only one means of justification. And you get a good report the same way that Abraham did. The same way that Isaac did. The same way that Jacob did. All right. Faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone that's ever been saved, that's how they were saved. Faith All in Jesus. Right. Faith in the Lamb of God. They didn't know at the time exactly how everything was going to work. But they took God at His word that a seed was coming. A Messiah was coming. A Lamb was coming, Brother David. All right that would save His people Amen. from their sin. Yes, sir. Without any help from you, God's plan of redemption, nowhere in it does He have to have help from you no. other than for you to put your faith where it belongs oh, in Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary. All right. Dagon has fallen. Quit setting him back up. Mm -hmm. You're never going to make it. <laughs> You're going to wrestle with Dagon your whole life. Trying to put him back up where he but he don't belong there. He belonged down there. Amen. Because he can't save anybody. Your works cannot save you. Struggling with trying to be good enough so that you can be justified and righteous will not save you. Amen. That's right. Does that condone sin? Oh, you ain't even getting the message this morning. Yeah. If you think that I'm preaching that put your faith in Jesus, go live like hell. Well, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Works and righteous living will follow if we can get our faith right. That's right, brother. If we can get our faith in the right place. Amen. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. No other way. That's right. Someone else this morning have something.